Hey, everybody. Um, this is our third episode of Tuesday Talks. I'm Emily. I'm Sarah. And we really hope you enjoy our episode today. We're talking a lot about um, Bob's first, um, and there's a lot to talk about. There's quite a lot. There's a few firsts, actually, not just the first first. Um, and, of course, as always, our guest of honor is Dr. Patterson, but this is an introduction, so he's not here. So we'll see you in the next clip. See ya. <laughs> um, Hey everyone, we're back for episode three of Tuesday Talks with Bob. Today we're going to be talking about some of Bob's first. So, our first question. So, Bob, tell us about your first job. My first job. <laughs> when was my first job? <clears throat> I had first jobs long before I came to NC State. I uh, had to work uh, to earn some money to pay the tuition and fees. Mm -hmm. You might think those are small numbers, but back then those were big numbers. <laughs> then when I came down here, I, I took a deep breath and I decided that I, I had to work. I, I had no choice but to work. Since I grew up on a dairy farm, I found out that there was an opportunity at a dairy uh, <laughs> where Wolf Village is now located on Western Boulevard. Yeah. That was a research dairy. Mm -hmm. Well, not, not the uh, dairy that was used for commercial purposes mm -hmm. on Hillsborough Street near the vet college. It was mm -hmm. a research dairy, 35, 36 cows. And I was so lucky to be given an opportunity to start milking cows there. They would let us milk every other morning and every afternoon. They wouldn't let us milk every morning. And I'm, I'm so thankful that they did. We, we had to start milking at six o'clock. Mm -hmm. And so I would milk and then drive back to Tucker 47 dorm and uh, try to get to my eight o'clock class. I didn't say 8.10 or 8.15 or 8.30. I said eight o'clock, oh eight o'clock. That is very uh, early. And especially when it was a Saturday morning class that started oh. at eight o'clock. Yes, mm, that's right. Not the Saturday morning. <laughs> so my first job, was to milk cows at the research dairy on Western Boulevard where Wolf Village is now located. Incidentally, that location is also where we had a, a crops teaching garden before the, the parking area now is where the garden was. I'd love to talk to y'all about that sometime, but not, not tonight. Um, one of my jobs was to check the cows for mastitis. You have a little cup and a filter, and if you see particles on the screen, that cow has to be taken out of the system. And so my job was to make sure that all the milk that went for research purposes was free of mastitis and, and other problems. If the cow had mastitis, we had to take them over to a different place, and, and they were uh, in, a, in a different location for two or three months. Mm -hmm. I love that work, <clears throat> but there was a problem that erupted one, one morning when I was in a hurry to get to class and someone sitting beside me said, Bob, you don't, you don't smell good. Oh. <laughs> and I had forgotten to, to do what I should have done and uh, changed my clothes and showered and I didn't really, I didn't smell it as so bad, but, but my, <laughs> my friends did. And also there was something else that happened in the spring semester of my freshman year over in um, the Withers Hall where I was taking organic chemistry. Uh, it, was, it was a morning lecture and I didn't, I didn't know until later what the teacher asked because I was not awake, but then later I I um, asked a friend, what, what did he ask? Oh, Bob, he, he, he said, would somebody wake up number? He didn't know our names, but he knew our seat numbers. Over there, the, every seat had a number. Would somebody wake up number, whatever my number was? And everybody laughed. Oh. And I decided that maybe that was not the right thing for Bob to do. Mm -hmm. By that time, I was in the environment club, and I, I want to talk about the environment club in, in a moment. But then I decided, well, maybe I need to do something different. So I had a friend who knew the people that worked in Passion Forges here. Mm -hmm. So down in the basement of the old wing of Williams, I got a job in Passion Forge management. And we would get in the car five o'clock in the morning and drive up to Laurel Springs mm -hmm. and 
and uh, it was a north-south slope study where we looked at grasses, legumes, and weeds grown on the north slope of a hill and on the south slope. We'd come back and we would we would uh, separate the grasses from legumes and weeds. That was wonderful work. What it was was an opportunity to get to know some of my friends mm -hmm. and talk about the agronomy class. <laughs> and that's what I did. So I had I had several different kinds of work that I did as a as a freshman and as a sophomore. The first job, you said what was your first job? <laughs> Can there only be one first job? I, there could <laughs> probably be a few. Oh yeah. Well, there's one more I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, after I had worked in the Passion Forge program for a while, I got real interested in, in soils, really interested in the soil. And on the third floor, there was a person who needed some help uh, uh, doing mechanical analysis, sand, soil, part, all that. And it was Dr. Ralph McCracken. So I went up on the third floor of Williams Hall and got involved in the, la the laboratory work that was so special to me. That, that, was, that really got my, my uh, heart thinking soil science. There was a lab next to the one that I worked in. Dr. McCracken said, Bob, you can look in that door, in that lab, don't you dare go in there, okay? <laughs> uh, I had no idea who Dr. Adolph Malik was, M-E-H-L-I-C-H. Mm -hmm. There's Malik one, Malik two, and now Malik three for phosphorus mm -hmm. uh, availability in the soil. Yeah. That was Dr. Malik's lab where he did the work that led to incredible conse good consequences. Then he moved out to another, to the soil testing lab in his later years, um, uh, and then, then to, the, to the final place, and then he passed away. I had an opportunity as an undergraduate in working to build some wonderful relationships, just as I did when I was in the agronomy club. And these work relationships, um, they've, they, they still pay dividends. Mm -hmm. I do want to share one story with you about uh, working in the lab with, with uh, Dr. McCracken. There was a, a visiting professor who came our way, and Dr. McCracken said, he's got something he wants you to do. What is it? Well, he wants you to, to read the, soil, soil, the, the current soils book. It was a Nile, Nile Brady's mm -hmm. old version. Y'all don't know about it too far back. I had no idea what this was about, but he video, he didn't video, he audio taped my reading the entire book. It oh, took, wow. it took months. Oh, and we worked oh, on wow. it a little bit and I did it because he told me that when he went back to Kyoto, K-Y-O-T-O, Kyoto mm -hmm. University in Japan, he, he wanted his students to learn English. And the oh, way to wow. learn English to speak English, where they would have the book and they would listen to my audio. Wow, that's good. And I found out that Dr. McCracken was in the Second World War, mm -hmm. and he and he was not in favor of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, mm -hmm. and he wanted to send a message to his colleague at Kyoto University that uh, we wanted to move together in a healthy way. We wanted mm -hmm. to build a bridge across oh, yeah. that that canyon. And uh, Dr. McCracken would talk about that some. So I, I did that, and <laughs> I had a friend who said, Bob, now you, you speak like you do up in the foothills of the mountains. They're, they're gonna learn a certain kind of English. <laughs> they're not gonna learn regular English. So I, I decided that I, I would not change. I would continue um, talking the way I talked mm -hmm. when I grew up. Now, when I went up to Cornell, uh, I was told that you don't. That I had I had a, I taught soils labs for two years. Mm -hmm. I was teaching assistantship. They told me that I needed to change my my pronunciation. No, no well, never. I, I had I tried to adjust it a little bit, but then when I came back home and visited my family, they said you're talking the wrong way. So I had to go back to the way I originally talked. <laughs> yes. That's the right way. Yes, the right way. <laughs> That's right. We all speak a dialect, don't we? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm just so thankful that I was given the opportunity early in my college life mm -hmm. to begin to do some work mm -hmm. that, that prepared me in what I consider to be the right way 
for the rest of my career, yes. both academically and research. There were jobs that were available just like there are today. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, we have we have faculty colleagues, I do, who are looking for, for student workers. Mm -hmm. and, and these jobs made a lot of difference. <laughs> study together for the exams. By the way, do y'all know what this is? Oh my goodness. This is a slide rule. Log, log, duplex, decitrig, slide rule. And you can, you can add, multiply, subtract, and divide with it. And we would put it in this holster. Now back then when we started as a freshman, there were no girls in any of my classes. But by the time I was a junior, um, there were a couple of girls in some of my, in my genetics course, for example. My friends would, I didn't have one of these then. The, the one I had was cheap. This is one I got later. But they would put it on their, you put it on your belt. And if the fellows were trying to impress the girls, if you owned one of these, they felt this, the girls would really be impressed. Uh, <laughs> and I didn't have one until later. Then I did get one later. But that didn't, didn't help a whole lot. <laughs> Um, this, but this is how we, we didn't, this does not need electricity. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I will not ever forget the moment there was a girl that wanted to join the environment. It was all boys. Mm -hmm. In 19, in the spring of 1958, which was my my, in, in my first year, spring semester, uh, that's when that's when I, I joined the club, and then that next fall of my sophomore year, there there was a girl that wanted to join, and so we huddled and we said, well, why not? <laughs> <laughs> the huddle. So, and then after the one after there was one, there were two and three. There were a few, but mm -hmm. not very many. Mm -hmm. You look in the old literature and you'll see one. It's mainly yep. guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. I'm just so thankful that the girls who ultimately decided to participate felt comfortable doing so. The fact that we now have the balance that we have, it means everything. Um, I, I cherish the days that I was given the opportunity to become involved in the Agronomy Club because that gave me an opportunity to, to meet friends who I would never have met mm -hmm. any other yeah. way. And we made plans to go do things that I could not have done any other way. I'm gonna say that the organization that the two of you are heavily involved in now, so heavily involved in, thank goodness, uh, paved the way for, for me having the kind of undergraduate experience that I had. Mm -hmm. It all started with the jobs. I, when, I worked, when I did the work at the dairy, uh, and then did, did the work in Passion Forages. Uh, we'd go up in the mountains with her down to the coast. Mm -hmm. And then when I worked upstairs on the third floor in the soils lab, I, I was able to learn, I was able to think and do in ways that enabled me to learn what I needed to know in order to be able to take the next step. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all the pieces just came together. It all came together, thank mm -hmm. goodness. That's, that's a good way of saying it. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good way of saying it. Well, on to our next question. <laughs> Dr. Patterson, what was your first day at State like? Oh boy. Oh. <laughs> My first day at State. Well, okay. My mother and my father came down here with me to unload things in 47 Tucker. No, I, I, I'm, I guess I, I should say, um, y'all don't say dormitory anymore, do you? You got another word for it. We say dormer hall. Yeah, <laughs> dormer hall, yeah. There, were, there was a bed and then there were a double bed. Uh, we had to decide who, who got to sleep <laughs> in that single bed. That was, I, I'm not gonna go any further with that. But I will say that I was told on day one, um, you're not allowed 
to bring an alarm clock in that requires electricity. Mm -hmm. There was not enough electricity for alarm clocks. Mm -hmm. I had a wind up clock. Oh, and, and, wow. And so that's how I, yeah, Tucker dorm did not have much electricity. Neither did the other dorms. Owen, Owen was the same way. Mm -hmm. Of course, yep. my friends who lived in Owen. Things now, would certainly change. Quite a bit. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we would, we would sit, sit around and talk and we would study for an exam. And for somehow, somehow, there was a metal trash can by the window. Uh, and sometimes we wouldn't go in the door, we would go through the window to get to our car was just outside the window. We were on the bottom floor then, mm -hmm. so we didn't have to go in and out of a door. Uh, somehow, the, the paper in the trash can started burning, it caught on fire. And we were trying to figure out how do we put this out well let's get let's take it let's throw it out of here so one of my friends picked up a metal trash can that was had stuff burning in it picked it up to throw it outside and some of his fingers went out too he burned his hands badly so we had to take him to we went over here to the uh east to the to the health place on the east end of campus and they said no this won't work you got to take him over to rex hospital the rex hospital then was on the other side of what was then called Cameron Village, mm -hmm. Village District now, not where it is presently. That was a terrible moment when our friend had to be taken. Oh, wow. We were we were told where Rex Hospital was located because they, they, they told us what could be taken care of on campus mm -hmm. and what could not be. Yep. Mm -hmm. We didn't know this was we didn't know how serious this was, but they sent us oh, they sent goodness. us to Rex. There were some other things that happened that were uh, difficult, but we, um, <laughs> I'll never forget that I, I made good friends with the fellow that, that worked in the kitchen uh, in Tucker dorm in the basement where, where, where we could eat. And I, they let me bring milk. And I, I grew up drinking raw milk. I didn't, mm -hmm. I, don't, I didn't drink pasteurized milk for a long time. So I could bring milk and cream back from the dairy out on Western Boulevard mm -hmm. We would store it there, and then we would get together and and, and make um, whipped cream with it, or whatever, or butter, whatever we wanted to. They let us do that. So there were some good times um, there, and I think that one of my most memorable experiences after I started spending more time in the agronomy club mm -hmm. was when we made decisions as a group to get together and do things that y'all are starting to do now. Mm -hmm. When I learn about y'all just making a decision to come together in a certain way, it brings back wonderful memories of times when, when we did that. We would go on trips together. Um, we'd go down to the coast, we'd, go, we'd, we'd have weekend field trips. And also at the agronomy meetings, we would, we would um, look forward to all of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> first time in the agronomy club like like what were some of your core memories of the first time you were in the agronomy club okay I'll, I'll i'll share i'll share a couple there's one that comes to mind immediately i would sit there listening to some of my friends talk about their farm down east and how big it was i said good gracious <laughs> um, they grew they grow all of that they grow that much cotton or that much whatever uh, when I was growing up uh, in, in elementary school, there would be two weeks in, the, in September that there would be no school. Mm -hmm. And we would go out and pick cotton. Mm -hmm. And then we would come back and go to school. But I was listening to my friends from down east where the cotton is grown, and they, they, were, uh, they, had, they were using equipment. They, they would show us pictures mm -hmm. um, that I had never seen anything like it. So what, what I want to say is, that having an opportunity to hear my agronomy club classmates talk about what they were doing mm -hmm. served as an incentive or a mm -hmm. motivation for Bob to, to uh, get up and start moving more than I had been. Mm -hmm. And I would say, can I go home with you this weekend? And, and they, they would always say yes. So I would go to these other farms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would learn. And I would come yeah. back. And I, when I would go home, I would tell my friends in, in, in Hickory, 
what I experienced, they would uh, sometimes they would believe me and say, "You you got to be kidding! Me. <laughs> they don't grow that they don't grow that many peanuts or whatever." <laughs> I said, well, yeah, that's what they that's what I saw. So the agronomy club experiences with my classmates who taught me what I really wanted and needed to know mm -hmm. were even more valuable than the classroom expenses. I'm going to just say what I believe. Mm -hmm. My time in the agronomy club was so important. Yes, my class time, my lecture time, my lab time was critically important, mm -hmm. but I'm going to say that the time that I spent with my classmates in the agronomy club was every bit as valuable to Bob mm -hmm. in college as was my formal class yeah, time yeah. and lecture time mm -hmm. because I learned so much and I was given an opportunity to go visit farms that I, I had no idea mm -hmm. that they were like that. Yeah. And so these are relationships that I'll, I'll give you, there was a, I, it was this past Friday, uh, a former student came by, there was something happening in Carmichael this Saturday, I don't, there was a, it was some kind of competition. And I, I had him as a student and, and um, he was in the agronomy club and he had a daughter uh, in the fourth grade. She had participated in some contest. I don't know the details now, but they were gonna, the next day, this was Friday afternoon, Saturday they were gonna, they were gonna participate in, in, in some in a contest yeah, in, mm -hmm. at Carmichael. And, and I asked her, this fourth grader, uh, what do you plan to do? She said, I wanna, I wanna go back home and help, help my parents. And, but I'm gonna go to state first. And so I said, when you go to state and you study, you want to join the agronomy club. <laughs> and her father said, well, I was in the agronomy club and I was gonna tell her that, but you beat me to it and, and I'm gonna make sure that she joins the agronomy mm -hmm. club. Yes. yes. Gotta teach them young. No, you honestly. Young. And what the, the relationships that, about, that you provide, that you permit to happen by what you do, by the opportunities that you provide all of us, there are no words to describe how special mm -hmm. they are. Yep, and you can't get that anywhere else. No, you, you really can't. can't. get it anywhere else. And it's becoming increasingly difficult when, when, when we're as isolated as we are and we have our cell phones. Mm -hmm. But what we know is there will nothing ever replace coming together mm -hmm. in person right. and having the conversations that, that happen here in exactly. our Grand club yeah. meetings and then in other ways too. Mm -hmm. Uh, on behalf of all of us who <laughs> benefit from these experiences, heartfelt thanks for giving us these opportunities. Mm -hmm. You're providing opportunities <laughs> that means so much. Well, thank you for yes. providing all of the things that you do for the club. All of the well, really really yeah. When I come in in the morning, I uh, think about the ways that I can be helpful that day to our mm -hmm. students. You're our future. and. I always think, now, what can, what can we do today for mm -hmm. our students that will help them both today yep. and tomorrow? Yes. And the agronomy club and all it entails always comes to mind. I'm just so That's thankful so sweet. for oh, you, thank for you. all of you thank who are in the agronomy club. Well, we're really thankful for you, Dr. Patterson. Uh, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't do it without him. No, we really couldn't. I'm the lucky one. I think about the, the future and the fact that that we have students coming our way that will be here later. And we, 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 we owe it to all of you to keep it going in a healthy way. And I promise you we're gonna do our best to continue what you have done. Uh, as as y'all move forward in your journey, uh, we want to respect what you have done mm -hmm. by keeping it going as best yes. we can. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna do that. And we definitely want as many people to have the experiences that we've been able to have yes. in high school or in college. There you go. That's <laughs> a, uh, that that statement, young lady, defines you in such a special way. You want others to have the opportunity to enjoy yep. what mm -hmm. the two of you have enjoyed yep. and your and your agronomy club classmates. Because mm -hmm. I have some really fond memories with the agronomy club that yeah. are not they're irreplaceable. I do too, and I haven't even been here that long. <laughs>
Yes, you're gonna you're gonna be here a while. I'm gonna be here for a minute. <laughs> a long minute. I, what I when I think back at what I cherish the most about my baccalaureate and undergraduate time, mm -hmm. it was knowing that gosh, tonight we're gonna come together again and we're gonna have fun. And mm -hmm. we did. Mm -hmm. And I could I could set aside some of Bob's problems, not all of them, but some of Bob's <laughs> problems, knowing that there would be a time that evening mm -hmm. when I was going to be with some very special classmates. Yes, exactly. Uh, the, the ones who chose to use some of their time in the agronomy club were, were so special. Mm -hmm. And what what is especially good is that it's not just agronomy majors that are in the agronomy club. Yep, yep. <laughs> we have others as well. Yep. And that that reality brings brings us all together mm -hmm. and gives us an, a chance to to learn from one another. Exactly. You'll learn you'll learn more from your interactions with your agronomy club classmates than you will learn anywhere else. Yep, yep. I agree. I, 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 I certainly agree with that. <laughs> so the fact that you have have a lot of a lot of majors mm -hmm. and curricula represented. That's a, that is one of your greatest strengths. It really is. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Well, we hope you enjoyed this yes. episode of Tuesday Talks with Bob. Um, as always, if you have any questions that you would like Dr. Patterson to answer, please leave a comment down below, and we'll see you next week. Bye, y'all. <laughs>